The $3 million 1992 Breeders' Cup Classic was an opportunity for the winners to secure Horse of the Year honors. But 12 Grade 1 winners and a field of 14 assured quite the quality field. This would make it a stiff challenge for AP Indy, who was sent off as a 2-1 favorite at post, followed closely by Pleasant Tap. Pleasant Tap beat AP Indy in the Jockey Club Gold Cup just a month earlier. Let's begin our featured race of the day here at... Tellier's Thoroughbred Racing Review, for the best of horse racing history on YouTube. Let's check the odds. AP Indy is the two to one favorite at the moment. Strike the gold, seven to one with his late charging style. Sultry Song is a five to one shot. Rodrigo Di Priano, six to one. And Pleasant Tap, second choice, currently at five to two. Mr. Consistency, Pleasant Tap. Here's what Pleasant Tap has done previously. Second in the sprint, eighth in the turf, six in the juvenile in his first Breeders' Cup appearance. Let's go out to Greg McCarran now. What about the betting favorite, AP Indy? Tom, I'll tell you, you if, while you watch the race, he'll be really easy to pick out. He's got a very, very unusual stride. He runs with his head real, real low, and but he has that innate ability to, to know where the wire is. It, it almost looks like he's not even trying to run, but he gets the job done. Um, and going back to the Jockey Club Gold Cup, um, Sultry Song was very, very lucky not to get hurt uh, when he got squeezed into the rail. And I watched him train down here this week. He blew out real good for the race, and he's going to be very tough in here. That Jockey Club Gold Cup full of trouble for Sultry Song and for AP Indy. AP Indy at the start. The two horse there is Rain Road with the young rising star we mentioned earlier, Kent DeSormo. Let's check in with uh, Greg McCarran and see if there's anything going on. These are pretty seasoned horses. I don't imagine much trouble so far, Greg. None whatsoever, but I can tell uh, John that Rodrigo really, really looks good. He's nice and calm, hardly broke out in any sweat at all, and, and he's walking up to the gate just, as, just like you'd want. Jockeys uh, riding a mile and a quarter race, a distance not often contested, try to save something with their horse. Do jockeys have to save a little of their energy as well? Yeah, you know, it, especially for a, a big race like this, the adrenaline is really, really pumped. By the time you get real near the gate, you'll see a lot of the jocks take their feet out of the iron. It's for one, to settle the horse, and two, to, to try to relax themselves. Um, I was talking to my brother a little while ago. He had a, a pair of uh, dark goggles on, and because the sun has gone in, he's taken them off, and, and I've seen a couple of the other jocks have done the same. John Beach, uh, AP Indy, continues to be the favorite, uh, two to one. What about three-year-olds beating older horses? Well, actually, three-year-olds this time of year, they don't get that much weight concession. It's very tough, unless they're, they're, unless they're an exceptionally good uh, three-year-old meeting a very weak crowd of older horses. But if you've got a good four-year-old, it's very tough for a three-year-old to beat him. So, man, a little reluctant to go in at 70 to one, though he won his last start, the Budweiser International at Laurel. We've seen the foreign horses be reluctant to go into the gate in several of our races today, and like 1989, the European horses have not won today. Perhaps the heat and the humidity of South Florida are too much for them. The weather has already turned cool in England, France, and Ireland. Some of the horses have begun to grow their winter coat, and perhaps that's too much for them to overcome. They've been shut out so far, and this last race is on the unfamiliar dirt surface for the Europeans. Jolifa, the first three-year-old filly to ever run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Trained by Andre Fabre, the leading trainer in France. The nine-horse Thunder Rumble, the New York-bred three-year-old. Next to go in will be the European champion, Rodrigo Di Triano. Let's go to Tom Durkin for the Classic Call. <laughs> And with the sun setting behind the Gulf Stream Grandstand, it provides the backdrop for the world's richest race, the $3 million Breeders' Cup Classic. Final horse moving into line, marquetry on the outside. The favorite is the Belmont winner, AP Indy. We're ready to go in the game. And they are off in the ninth Breeders' Cup Classic. And AP Indy breaks well today. He comes out running for the lead. Jody's handle with good speed as well. Defensive play is there toward the inside. Thunder Rumble is up close to a strong early pace here as they race by the stands for the first time. It's Jody's halo and Thunder Rumble, and those two hook up in an early duel. Defensive play is in behind him. Sultry Song is now moving into third. Technology is four wide, running in fourth. Then toward the inside, defensive play is fifth. AP Indy is winning sixth. Jolifa is a wide seventh. Zoman is up close to an early pace. Marketry's there on the outside. And then it's 
Pleasant tap. He's running now in 11th position. He's only about eight lengths from the early lead. European Rodrigo Di Triano's to his outside. Then it's five lengths to Rain Road. And far, far behind is Strike the Gold. He's already 20 out of it. And the half went in 45 and four. A sizzling pace here as they move into the backstretch. Thunder Rumble is pressed hard under intense pressure from Jolie's Halo. Technology is trying to keep pace in third. Defensive play is right there now, racing in fourth position. Sultry Song is fifth. Zoman is only five lengths from the lead. Jolifa is moving strongly as they move into the far turn. AP and he's dropped back in the pack. Pleasant Tap is in between horses. Now he's still about seven lengths from the lead. And then it's marketry as they're on the far turn. And Thunder Rumble rolls to a two-length lead now. Defensive play has moved in toward the inside. Jolie Salo's in an all-out drive. He's working hard to keep up. AP Indy is finding his best stride. And he's moving powerfully in between horses as they move toward the top of the stretch in this ninth Breeders' Cup Classic defensive play. Thunder Rumble is still there. Finishing second, and Jolifa was third, and the time was two minutes and a fifth. AP Indy, the Belmont Stakes winner, comes charging through the stretch here. He was up close, then he dropped out of it and came on like a tiger to win the world's richest race. AP Indy, the three-year-old, upsetting the older horses. He was the betting favorite, but many doubted him. AP Indy by Seattle Slough at a weekend surprise by Secretariat. Bred in Kentucky by Farish and Kilroy. He cost $2.9 million as a yearling at Keeneland. He's just had the biggest win of his life. AP Indy, he looked to be trapped down the back stretch. He had a wall of horses in front of him, a wall of horses to the outside of him. Eddie D was very patient. He waited for his time, switched him to the outside, and through the stretch, AP Indy was the strongest of all. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Traffic is such an important part of this game, Gary Stevens. You were on Pleasant Tap, a come-from-behind horse. You need a clear run. Did you get one today? No, not really. That was the one thing I was concerned about. I was very confident in this horse, but any time you get a 14-horse field, you got to be worried about traffic. And, you know, my worst nightmares happened at the 3 8 pole. We were in mid-pack, and there was nothing but traffic in front of me. I had two horses on the outside of me. Had no, uh, no choice but to try and get through on the inside. Got stopped one time. Had to steady till the head of the stretch and never really did get loose until inside of the eighth pole. And uh, he never did really hit his best stride because of that. He's a horse that's a real free running horse once he starts his move. And, uh, you know, finished great to finish second. It was a heck of an effort from him and uh, proud of him the way he did that. But, uh, you know, not, not really a clean trip for him. All right. In your opinion, with clear sailing, would you have beaten AP Indy today? I can't make that statement. Uh, AP Indy was an easy winner today. He's uh, done an awful lot this year. And, uh, Neil Drysdale's done a heck of a job getting him ready. He's got a great rider in Eddie Delahousie, and they won the race today, and that's the whole bottom line. And uh, I wouldn't want to say if I could beat him or I couldn't. It would have been a closer race. Whether I would have beat him or not, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was a great horse race. That's a game of racing luck. Gary picked up the mount in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and now because of some traffic problems, has to settle for second money in this Breeders' Cup Classic. For the official results, let's go back to Tom. All right, Bob, and the ironies abound. Eddie Delahousie was the regular rider on Pleasant Tap, but he chose AP Indy. It was a bad decision on the Jockey Club Gold Cup Day. It was a good decision on Classic Days. I'm here with Eddie Delahousie, 41 years old. Now, always thought him to be the greatest, but after today, this is probably the greatest day in your life, Eddie. You're just blossoming as you get older. Well, I keep riding those kind of horses, Trevor. I'll, I'll continue riding. It'll make me young. We're going to take a look at the monitor right now. Unfortunately, we're not getting a picture up here, but tell us what it was like out there, basically from the 3 8 pole to the stretch. Well, I was in tight all the way. He was stuck down on the rail, and as you've seen, he broke real well. I was laying uh, good going toward the first turn, then I lost position in the middle of the turn, I started dropping back again. Then near the half-mile pole, I had to really hustle him to get him up in there, and... Uh, he was a little intimidated, but uh, once I started after him, boy, he really excelled. And I was screaming at him here, and just he was getting that, getting with it. Can and you I see daylight lucky here? Well, right here it was a little tight, and it just broke perfect for me right here. The horse on the outside, he couldn't hold me in, and when I got out right here, I said, "This is it. It's all over." 
Did you ever see Gary Stevens coming on Pleasant Temp down at the rail? No, I didn't uh, see him. I knew when, once we got in front that uh, they better have a good one to beat him because he was really digging in. Well, after the Kentucky Derby scratch and that trouble last time out, I guess justice prevails. He came through with APMB today. Absolutely. He ended up the year, year great. How many times you hit him today, Eddie? I don't know if I uncocked my stick. I don't think you hit him at all. I just wish we had a room full of jockeys like that. Well, when you don't need it, you don't have to use it. Sometimes you need it, though. For the best in historic horse racing action is Thoroughbred Racing Review. Subscribe on YouTube and read the rest of the story on Facebook. Subscribe now.